was just grabbing dinner and that he would be home soon. By 2 a.m., he had still not returned, and after texting him 22 times, his grandma had not heard from him still. And then the next day, Jimmy did not show up for work, so the day after that, his grandparents officially called the police and reported him missing. However, as we see so often when young people go missing, the police did not take it seriously, and they said, eh, he'll turn up, basically. So, um, then, the day after that, another 19-year-old boy went missing. described as a troubled boy and he had been in trouble with the law before. He was involved in buying and selling drugs and he struggled with depression. He was in and out of mental health facilities as well. But in that year of July 2017, he seemed his life together. On the 7th of July, he told his family he was leaving to go see a friend. He was last seen at 6.30 p.m. in Newtown Township. His phone was off when his parents tried to contact him, so they reached out to his friend. But nobody could answer his parents as to where he was. So his parents filed a missing person report with the police as well. On the same day, the 7th of July, at about 6 p.m., 22-year-old Mark Sturgis from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, told his dad he was going to meet up with his best friend, 21-year-old Thomas Mayo. They worked together for Mark's dad's construction company, and they were last seen on Friday. His dad became concerned because he did not show up for work the next day on Saturday. None of these boys had any connections with each other, aside from Mark and Thomas, who, as we mentioned, were best friends. Mark's dad began to worry on the next Saturday when the boys didn't show up for work, and when he called Mark's phone, it kept going straight to voicemail. So, he also filed a police report, and finally, the police were concerned that four boys had gone missing in the span of two days. So, the police started a search. The next day, on Sunday, Mark's car was found in an out shopping center about 30 minutes away from where he lived. They started doing some digging, and after going through Dean's friends list, it led them to a farm not far from where Mark's car was found. And on this farm, they found a shed, and a search of this shed led to Thomas's car being discovered. Inside were the keys to the car and also his diabetic kit or his kit for his diabetes, which was very suspicious because that's medication. That's something that you can't go without. They also learned that Jimmy Patrick's last phone ping 
was in the same location at this farm. So not only did they find Thomas's car, but Jimmy's phone banged in the same location. So, all cues pointed to something sketchy happening on this farm. They discovered that the farm belonged to a family called the Donardo family. And this family was the son of two parents, and this son's name was Cosmo Donardo. He was the one on Dean Fenegaro's friends list, which led to the initial search of the farm. So now we are going to talk about Cosmo Donardo's life and upbringing for context. He was born in 1997, and he grew up in Ben Salem. His family was very wealthy, and they owned several businesses. Some of these businesses include a concrete company, a delivery company, and they were involved in real estate. In 2005, they purchased a 90-acre farm in Solberry, Pennsylvania. This farm became a vacation and, I'm sorry, a vacation spot and just kind of a getaway property for the family. They would use this property to hunt, shoot, and ride ATVs. Cosmo went to a private elementary school. He was described as a very good, well-behaved kid, and he was even named Peacemaker of the Month one year in his class. He went to grad school, and he was the star of his football team until he had to quit football due to several concussions and a neck injury. He got a scholarship to Arcadia University as a biology major. After these head injuries, though, these concussions, he started to have behavioral, behavioral problems and run-ins with the police. He had run-ins with the police 30, that's right, three zero, thirty 30 different times, but no arrests were ever made. Some of these incidents included mental health concerns, reckless driving, and traffic citations. In 2015, he broke up with his girlfriend because he wanted to become a Navy SEAL. And in February of 2016, he was diagnosed with major depressive disorder. And he dropped out of college before finishing the second semester of his freshman year at Arcadia University. In May of the same year, he was in a very severe ATV accident on the farm. He was pinned under the ATV for hours, and he ended up with fractured bones all the way up his leg. This was not the worst injury, though. He also suffered a brain bleed and damage to his frontal lobe. So let's talk about that for a second. He was in a wheelchair for a long time, but a lot of people question the mental damage from this accident. Because if you are unaware, your frontal lobe is what is responsible for things like rational thinking, decision making, stuff like that. So, soon after this incident, he started using K2, which is a synthetic drug or a synthetic version of cannabis or marijuana. 
he said that they got into a fight and he left Dean on the side of the road before returning home to go fishing on the farm to find an excuse to bring Cosmo in the police re-arrested him on his firearm charges that had been dismissed remember due to the paperwork issue the next day he was bailed out by his dad a search of the 90 acre farm began by the district attorney nearly 100 policemen joined and they used full equipment cadaver dogs were brought in but no human remains were found police because of this had hope that the missing boys were still alive Cosmo was arrested once again on different charges. A friend had come forward saying Cosmo had sold the missing boy, um, Thomas, so Thomas's car. Cosmo had sold Thomas's car for $500. So he was charged with stolen property and theft and his bail was set to five million dollars five million dollars because they knew this guy's daddy was rich so they were not about to have him bailed out again thankfully so bail set to five thousand dollars i'm sorry five million dollars so he's not going anywhere mention this case gets a bit graphic from here so trigger warning it gets violent so please click away if you don't want to listen to this can't handle that i understand okay please click away so like i said he was charged with the stolen property and theft bail was set to five million and on the 13th of july the remains of three men were discovered after being tipped so they were led to another farm where they had found the remains of these three boys and the remains were found buried in a 12 foot grave. The bodies were identified as Tom, Mark, and Dean. Cosmo, after realizing he was caught, confessed to the murders. He was arrested and charged with three counts of homicide, along with Sean Kratz, who was also arrested the next day. Police said the murders were planned by these two boys and they had done this by disguising the murders as drug deals. So they had set up three different drug deals with these different boys, drug deals, but they had planned to murder them before meeting. So, Cosmo told the police that on July 5th, he agreed to sell Jimmy Patrick four pounds of marijuana for $8,000. Cosmo picked Jimmy up from his house and drove him to the farm. Jimmy admitted that he only had $800. And so Cosmo agreed that he would sell him a shotgun instead. When Jimmy denied, Cosmo shot him in the head and immediately started to dig the grave afterwards. Two days later, on July 7th, Sean and Cosmo drove to Dean's home for another marijuana deal. On the way, they had a 
decided to rob and murder him instead. So they picked him up and drove him to the farm. When they arrived at the farm, they went into the barn, where Sean shot him in the back of the head several times with Cosmo's mother's stolen shotgun. So Cosmo had stolen his mom's shotgun for these murders. After he was deceased, Cosmo took the gun from Sean and shot him a couple more times. I am going to share with you a conversation um, that happened during Cosmo's interrogation. And this is graphic, so... Skip ahead, like, a minute if you don't want to hear the conversation, but it really ticked me off, and it really puts into perspective who Cosmo is as a person, so I wanted to share it with you. So, in this interview that went public between the detectives and Cosmo, the detective asked him, quote, Why did you shoot him? Was he not dead? End quote. Because remember, Cosmo had taken the gun from Sean and continued to shoot him. So Cosmo replies, quote, No, he was dead, but I just, just to finish. You know, I mean I shot him. I'm not lying. He was dead. His head was split the hell open. His brain, you probably found it. Half his brain was around in the barn. End quote. Like, I have chills right now. And I know it. It went me reading it to you as one thing, but listening to the interview, I was shook. Like, he says it so casually. Like, what is wrong with this dude? And he's 20 years old. Like, I'm 20. Like, I just can't wrap my brain around it. <sighs> so, his body was then wrapped in a blue tarp and placed in a metal tank. The same day, a meeting was arranged to sell weed to Thomas Mayo. Sean stayed at the farm while Cosmo drove to meet Thomas at a shopping center, the one where Mark's car was found. To Cosmo's surprise, Thomas was not alone, but he was with his best friend Mark in Mark's car. Cosmo convinced him to leave the car at the shopping center and ride back with him to the farm. On the way to the farm, the boys just got a bad gut feeling that something was not right. And when they got to the farm, they actually turned their backs to go and walk away. And Cosmo shot Thomas, who then fell to the ground screaming. Mark started to run away, but was shot in the back of the head. And he was dead immediately, but as it turns out, Thomas was actually not killed by his gunshot wound. Instead, they had struck his spine, which paralyzed him, and Cosmo was out of ammo. So Thomas was laying on the ground, screaming that he couldn't feel his legs. And, of course, he had just gotten shot and watched his best friend get murdered. So he's screaming, he's in pain, right? But Cosmo wasn't phased, he was just annoyed by the screaming, saying that the neighbors were gonna come over. And 
so he gets a backhoe and runs Thomas over. A backhoe, in case you don't know, is a construction vehicle. It's that really big vehicle with like the big rolly wheels and it's used for like digging and scooping. It's a very massive vehicle. And he just ran Thomas over like it was nothing with this. So after this, the two boys, Sean and Cosmo, throw the two boys' bodies in the same metal tank as the other body, and they attempt to burn them. Cosmo and Sean then left and drove to the DiNardo family home, which was about 30 minutes away. When they arrived, Cosmo's mother was there, and this part gives me chills, guys. So, the mother said that when they arrived home, the boys were in good spirits, and she even texted Sean's mother, saying, quote, they sounded like they were having fun, end quote. To which Sean's mother replied, I hope they both use their positives to cancel out the negatives. LOL. I'm sure you do too, and I think they will, end quote. Cosmo's mother then replied, quote, and thank you. Cosmo really needed a friend, end quote. How messed up is this? Like, I'm actually shook up. Oh. I'm trying not to tear up, but this case really got to me for some reason. I think since they're all around my age, it just puts into perspective, like, just the gravity of the situation. Like how many innocent 19 to 22 year olds, college students go to, you know, get weed or whatever and get murdered in such a brutal way. Like, oh, it's so sad. Anyways, the next day when they heard that the boys were reported missing. The two, Cosmo and Sean, returned to the farm to bury the bodies and cover up their tracks. Cosmo showed police where Jimmy's body was and confessed to avoid the death penalty. He pled guilty to four counts of first-degree murder, robbery, abuse of a corpse, conspiracy, possession of instruments of crime, and illegal firearms possession. He was sentenced to four life sentences without the possibility of parole. Sean rejected a plea deal stating, I'm sorry, the plea deal stated um, that he would get a mandatory prison sentence of only 56 years if he confessed and pled guilty. But, however, he actually said that he wanted the death penalty because it would make him famous. But they did not give him this, and he was sentenced to life in prison with no parole as well. And off topic, but I'm so glad that they both got life in prison without parole and that Cosmo was not deemed insane because before I got to the trial, I was thinking, oh no, they're going to pull up this stuff about a head injury and he's going to get off in like a mental, mental institution or something which I am not downplaying mental health. I do not want you to think that 
said, I don't know why I did this. I threw my life away for nothing. Like, boy, you just took four lives without even thinking anything about it. So I hope he sits in prison and thinks about what he did for the rest of his life. But the case does not end there. Wrongful death suits were filed against the DiNardo family. Um, actually three out of the four families filed wrongful death suits against the DiNardo family. The families said that this could have been prevented and said that the gun used in the murders belonged to Sandra, Cosmo's mother, making her negligent. The DiNardo family said that when Cosmo went to the mental institution, they removed all guns from the home except for the 357, which was kept in a hidden locked box. In 2020, it was deemed the parents could be held accountable under Pennsylvania law for what their son did, and the matter was privately settled. So, that is the end of the case. Please share your thoughts. I know this one's a little bit controversial. I'm sure people have mixed opinions about the head injury and the wrongful death suits that were filed, but ultimately, I think that both people got what they deserved. I'm glad they're both and for life and rest and peace to these four boys. It's so sad. They all sounded like good people. None of these boys deserved this. I just, I can't imagine So please let me know what your opinions are, if you disagree with anything I have said. I will respect you as long as you state your opinion respectfully. I believe everybody is entitled to their own opinions, so I would love to hear from you. If you have a case recommendation, feel free to let me know that as well.